take you way back now. I mean, we've known each other for more years than we probably care mm -hmm. to remember. Mm -hmm. We've worked together for so much. And um, I can remember when Southern Television lost their franchise, Jack uh, was asked by Channel 4 to do yeah. a series of programmes. And his cameraman at that stage, Stan Bro, didn't want to uh, do those. He, went, he was retiring anyway. Yeah. So Jack came to me and asked about finding a cameraman, and I suggested you. Had yeah. you had, did you know much about Out of Town at that stage? Not really. Um, I knew, obviously I'd seen it, you know, with him um, and seen um, his other programme, How. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew of Jack and you know Southern TV, but I didn't really know how the program was done. Um, and uh, anyway, he um, he came round one day. All right. And um, so he he just came round. He said he'd come to you know he arranged it. Um, mm. He said that I'd been suggested as a cameraman. He wanted to come and meet me and have a chat. And that's what he did. Um, I don't think I really showed him any of my work or anything like that. I, mean, I think we just generally talked about what, you know, what he wanted and how it would work. You know, it would be so many days a week and it would be between um, sort of April to October. Um, and there might be the odd day in the winter if there was some particular uh, thing, you know. And, and um, anyway, that's that's more or less... I can't quite remember how we came to sort of an arrangement, but he decided that, I don't know if he told you. Oh yes, he came straight back and he said, oh, I think I could get on well with Steve. So. Yeah, well, that was, that so we, was just pure luck. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, knowing you, you, you are a reasonably quiet sort of person and mm. Jack liked that sort of thing and someone he could rely upon and they would just get on and do, do the work yeah. without being yeah. uh, too noisy about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. very different to what you were used to, wasn't it? Because you yeah. had no sound. I had no sound, sound. no. Um, but I suppose I've been used to, and it was on film, mm -hmm. um, and the idea was um, that I would meet Jack, we'd meet up normally at his house, which then, then Shillingstone. And um, Isabel used to make very good coffee, good. and so we used to start the day at about 10 o'clock, we'd meet up, and then we'd go off and do the filming, um, depending on what it was. I mean, a lot of it was quite local, you know, say if it was fishing, it would be local fishing um, on the stour or the, um, the um, piddle. Um, and he used to have fishermen that he knew that we could go fishing with. Um, occasionally he'd go fishing on his own. Because um, he, he had, um, he rented um, a stretch of the piddle. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, and um, so he used to stop that with brown trout, and um, I can't, you know, was, you know, you could do that sort of thing. You know, you could rent that particular thing, and you had the fishing on one side of the bank, and not quite often that would be on his own. He would go and fish that his own trout stream, and talk about whether it was the mayfly or you know the trout, or just generally about fishing. You know, he'd talk about the birds that you'd see when you were fishing. Didn't always have to catch a fish, although mostly trout fishing, he would catch a fish. Um, and then uh, we used to go course fishing, sort of pond fishing as he used to call it. Mm -hmm. Jack never was that keen on course fishing. You know, he liked trout fishing or game fishing, but he was never so, you know, he, he used to sit by the river bank and say, well, <laughs> you know, um, time you've been here an hour, you know, my mind's been round the world twice. <laughs> so, so he used to get, you know, interested in the tackle because I think at that time they were just bringing out the uh, the pole fishing. So you know, you'd have a pole that you used to put different bits, you know, different lengths in all the time, you know, and then I'd get the bait right out. The way he wanted I can't it. remember, maybe Dave Swallow did the pole fishing one. He might, he might, yeah, he might well have done. The pole fishing one was done for uh, Old Country. And, uh, yeah, I yeah. Think, so, so, yeah. Um, so, and then we used to do dogs, was another thing that we used to do near here. He had some dog trainers, that, um, and of course he had his own dogs. Mm. And his own dogs were so beautifully trained. You know, I remember that he used to. At that time, he had a little Suzuki four-wheel drive from Jimmy. Yeah, I remember it. 
and um, he would open the door at the back and the dogs wouldn't move until he said out. Wow. Mm. So they wouldn't bound out, you know, and, mm. and, and so, you know, they were, he was completely in control of them. But, you know, he had a friend who was a trainer and he used to, you know, he knew about training and he, and he um, the chap used to train gun dogs. So, and that was the other thing, I suppose, we had shooting. Yeah. So yeah. he used to go shooting. Um, mostly pigeon shooting. <laughs> right. uh, he used to f find uh, a local farmer that he knew that you know, wanted to get rid of the pigeons off his cornfields. So how did, I, I mean when I was editing the programmes he'd come into my cutting room, he'd yeah. we'd look through the rushes and he'd just give me an idea of what he w wanted the story to, to be and then he'd go yeah. off. He never sort of said to me, oh I want that included or that included. How yeah. did he go about you, you met him in the morning, did he go yeah. through what he wanted and just leave you to get on with it? Yes, more or less. Um, he would um, decide on what were the important parts of what he wanted to get across. You know, which, well, whenever we were filming he would have certain ideas that, you know, this was an important piece, this is what he was going to talk about, and, you know, in the later stage. Uh, and then he'd just leave me to get on with it, really. Um, right. Occasionally he'd have an idea that, you know, he'd want a specific sequence. Um, but essentially he would just wander around, you know, um, going about the story, if you like. It depends on what it was. Um, mm. You know, if it was, it was shooting, then obviously he would d maybe do some shooting. But most of the time you were filming the other people doing what they were doing. Um, and then he was an observer, right? And and yeah. so you'd have shots of him watching, um, and you know when he was fishing with somebody else, he would be his own cutaway. Mm. So you'd be filming the other person fishing, and then they'd have a shot of Jack either catching something or not. Didn't mm. matter. Yeah. Um, yes, I can remember that yeah. well because he really wasn't fussed whether he caught something or not. No. It was more important the person he was with to see yeah. them catch something. Yeah. Because then they were doing some, they were after some specific fish, or they had some specific way of doing it. You know, I think there was some chap um, when we were doing some fly fishing, and he had a, he was showing us how to do a rolling cast, I oh, think, right. mm -hmm. or a side cast, so that you could, if there was overhanging trees and things, you could still get the fly onto the water but underneath the trees, mm. which you know is a different skill as opposed to just going straight forward and mm. back. Um, so did you do any sea fishing at all? Eh? Some, not, not a great lot. We, um, we went out uh, bass fishing. Um, he had another, another of his contacts, he had contacts all over the place. Um, was um, a, uh, a chap who ran a pub um, in Poole mm -hmm. and um, he used to go fishing and um, the skipper used to take us out and he took us out to the needles right. and um, we used to just sit around off the end of the needles and you know, where the race is, where the tidal race sits through and um, catch some bass. But unfortunately we never got to keep any of them. Oh, in fact, the, <laughs> I think the landlord had most of them to serve in his, in his <laughs> pub. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, so I wasn't too much sea fishing, which mm. pleased me because I'm not a great sailor. <laughs> so um, there's a picture of you I, I've I've got where you're on a cart. You're filming him on a cart. Do you remember that at all? Though? Yes. Um, near where he lived, there was a chap called Jeff um, who ran a horse transport business and a livery stable. And I think Jack used to keep the horse there because. Um, he used to have some horses, um, and one to pull, which um, they used to use for the titles. You know, we had some titles which mm -hmm. were with the specific horse that used to come. We used to do it going down the, the old um, drove roads, Shaftesbury Drove, um, and various other places. And Jeff used to transport the cart and the horse around in his in his horse box. Because there was another chap he knew who. Uh, made carts um, called John Pickett. Oh, John Pickett, yes. Unfortunately, he's not around any longer no. either. 
He and was great at painting them as well, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah. yes. He was um, very good at doing the lines. And one particular cart he had was the one where he had a lot of gold leaf on it. Mm -hmm. um, and they used to talk about the books of gold. So you get the the gold leaf would come in a, in a you know in wafer thin pieces of gold in you know, like a like a little notebook almost mm. and then you just brush you know smooth the gold leaf onto the cart and it, I think he said it had a hundred books on it but wow. I mean there was yeah. it was whole horses heads every um, almost every end of every part of the cart had a horse's head carved onto it all right and yeah. so it was really yeah I, I, um, I seem to recollect uh, editing some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. John Pickett. Yeah. And he, he used to have um, a yard uh, near, between Salisbury and Shaftesbury. Um, and that yard is where Jerry Cottle started out his circus. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, John Pickett was just a name yeah. to me who would appear on the schools, going way back throughout the town as well. Mm. John Pickett, uh, if there's any cart printing to be done. So you, you also covered sort of crafts like wheel, uh, wheel rights and that sort yeah. of thing, which um, they, were, they tended to be local people as well, weren't they? They were mostly, yes. Um, there was a, a, also near John Pickett's yard, there was a, a, a blacksmith mm -hmm. that we did some work with him. Um, and then they used to do coppicing, so you used yeah. to see how coppicing yeah. worked. Uh, that was all local. I mean, most of the stuff was local. Um, I don't think we went away very much. I think the um, the only places we went, we went to Stowe Fair, I think, mm -hmm. which is a gypsy horse fair, Stowe yeah. on the World. And I think we also went to Appleby Fair. Oh, Appleby, that yeah. Which is very famous. Um, yeah, yeah. But Jack used, used a lot, or used to know a lot of gypsies. Yeah. Uh, mainly due to his horse dealings. Mm. Um, he used to buy and sell horses here and there, you know, which he used. Um, I don't think he rode a horse, I've never seen him riding a horse, but he used to use them, you know, no, carts. Know, but, no, I don't hear um, But yeah, he used to know a lot of, there was a, a, one chap who used to have a circus, a gypsy, called oh, Brassy, Brassy Searle. Brassy Searle, yeah, yeah. And his daughter. His da daughter yeah. did the plaiting of the tails in one yes. of the, the yeah. programmes I edited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, there used to be a circus with horse, not of horse mm. participants, shall we say, and the daughters used to stand on the horses and get them to lie down and <laughs> and, and do all that. And um, yes, I mean he, that was one of his um, gypsy friends. What about markets? Uh, in those days, you had markets all over the place, didn't you? Yes. Uh, well, we did do some markets. Um, really, it was the markets were. Um, incorporated into usually um, you know with a carriage drive mm -hmm. if that's not quite the word a carriage drive you know because it wouldn't be a carriage but um, you know with a horse and cart because the idea was that years ago Jack was saying that um, market towns used to be about 12 miles apart because that was a comfortable journey there and back in a day for a horse and cart yeah so you couldn't do 25 miles mm. very easily, or you couldn't do 50 miles. But obviously that's changed quite a lot now. Mm. So you don't have the markets mm. um, so nearby. Some are, I suppose. If you enjoyed this programme, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell if you want to be notified when more videos are available. In part two, Steve explains how he filmed Jack in his shed and how we put the whole programme together. And if you would like to buy the complete Old Country series of 60 programmes, please go to the link in the description below.